We're here at, at PyCon 2023 in Salt Lake City, Utah. I am Jay Miller, Senior Cloud Advocate for Microsoft, and with me uh, is a member of the Faster C Python team. Uh, I believe we've talked before, and uh, I believe now uh, a newly accepted PEP author. Uh, so congratulations on that, Eric. Thank so, you. Eric, how you doing? Doing pretty well. Eric, how many how many PyCons does this make for you? Oh boy, I, I've. Uh... My first one was 2008, but then I came back in 2011 and haven't missed one since. Okay, wow. So you you've got a you've got a streak going there. It's a few. What have, what have you been doing uh, since you've been here? I know you're a core developer, so you have things like the Maintainer Summit and like so many other things. But uh... yeah, so uh, to me, PyCon's the the best opportunity that I have to really get in and interact with people in the community and also other contributors. Uh, it's just so much more effective in person, as you can imagine. So I, I try and take advantage of that as much as possible. Whether it's, you know, I see somebody I want to talk to, I stop and talk to them or introduce myself to people I don't know, which is not the easiest thing for me, but it, I found it's one of the most effective ways to get a sense of how people are using Python and what's going to help them. Does that decision-making process, like when when you're you're meeting people, you're hearing how they're using Python. Does that help you in maybe formulating new ideas for the language? Absolutely. Yeah. You know, it, to an extent, it's it helps me stay aware of how people are using Python, which informs those decisions. Yeah. But it also, um, it's, it's also the connection to the people, really, for me, is one of the important parts because it's easy to get lost in all the technicalities, but when you can keep that focus on the impact that this is happening having on people, it, for me, it really helps uh, keep the dynamic very healthy and helps me focus on really what matters. That's awesome. So I know that you are a part of the Faster C Python team and we spoke a little bit later, like last, last year uh -huh. uh, in the fall, about this pep that you were working on. And I then see in all of the, the discourse, and I, I subscribe to all the peps, and I see like new pep approved of, of the sub interpreter, and I see you're the, the author. I'm sure you've had other peps approved in the past, but how does it feel knowing that one of the things that you've been working on that like helps with the performance of Python uh, get accepted? Uh, it's super exciting. Uh, this is a project that I've been working on for eight and a half years. I, and I, I talk about kind of the journey in the talk I gave on Friday, but the, the gist of it is it, it's been a, a long project. I haven't worked on this full time and uh, I, I wasn't sure where it was going to end, but I knew that it was going to lead to a lot of good stuff, regardless of how it finished, which it has. And you know, I mostly worked on it just part time with lots of help from lots of people and eventually got to the point where I could work on it part-time uh, at work and it last few months been able to work on it full-time. But it was really kind of hard to see the end because it's stretching on so long, right? And I've always known that this is gonna have a big impact, but it's the closer we've gotten, the more like the, I, I felt the energy of this project and felt really the, the possibilities, the more I talked with people, and, and you could get a sense of people were kind of starting to capture the idea of it. So with that PEP, it was kind of the, the culmination of that. Once it was accepted, it was like, yeah, people are, are really getting this, and now uh, hopefully we'll get that landed for 312 in the next couple of weeks. And that, that sense of reality, I, I talked about this in my, po my talk, that, uh, like in my head, I knew that it was going to change how performance looked when using multiple cores. But then working on the talk, I put together the, the data from some experiments I ran with this branch that I'd only recently got to the point where I could do this. And I could see, you know, wow, it really is that thing, the hard numbers, the graphs, like it's real and just, I don't know. It's so exciting, so exciting. So give folks a little bit more background on what the PEP is and, and how, how you've kind of implemented it over several years. Cause I mean, if it's been eight years, I'm sure Python has changed a lot. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. the original ideation of it. Well, and, and it's funny because 
uh, the, the actual feature that I'm taking advantage of here is sub-interpreters, where you can have multiple interpreters in a process. Yeah. And uh, that's existed since uh, I think it was like 1997 or something like that. Oh, wow. It's been around for decades, right? And so uh, the, the one key thing, though, is that interpreters share a lot of state or, or have. And one of those things is they shared the gill. So even though you might think, oh, interpreters are independent from each other. Well, they weren't in, in these different ways. And so the idea is, well, if they stop sharing the gill, then suddenly each in, uh, interpreter in the process running on in different threads could take advantage of different cores, right? And we could have true multi-core parallelism in Python. But, you know, they had all of this, this state that they still shared like lots. And that's the bulk of the work has been fixing that, kind of pulling all this state apart. And it's like, I had a list of, of thousands of global C variables that we had to fix. Mm. And so one at a time. And so that, that's kind of what this project's been all about. So it's really ultimately give Python a really clear story about how to take advantage of multiple cores on a modern CPU. I love that. And it, it, I love how you've taken like a, a relatively newer architecture and design with multi-core and then you've used maybe an older system, an older architecture to make that happen. One interesting thing with that is uh, the, I, so kind of, I, I reached the realization that we had to do something about this in 2014. And so I took the next year, I really, my whole focus was on figuring out how we could solve this. And I looked at all the possibilities, you know? I, I looked at what we already had, if we could make things better, like async or, or multi-processing or any of the other solutions we already had, how we could make threading work, you know, how hard it'd be to remove the gill. And I looked at research, I looked at what other languages did. I, I, I really did a lot of, of research into this and I kept coming back to using multiple interpreters, a per interpreter gill. It, I just couldn't see a way, I, I could see how that could happen. I could see how I could do it. I, I didn't, there's a just, I'm not an expert in a lot of this stuff, right? I, I'm probably a lot more like most people than they think and I was like, okay, what's within my capacity? And uh, all this other stuff is like, no, 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 no. But, but multiple interpreters, a per interpreter gill, it was the one thing I kept coming back to. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing I could do and nothing else. So that's, that's kind of how I, uh, I came to this. And really, you're right. I mean, it was all about taking advantage of a lot of the stuff that people had already built and just making it in, in, at a high level, making one change that would take advantage of all this. It's just made of lots and lots and lots of little pieces. So right now we're in April, the end of April, and I know the feature freeze is coming up soon. And then you have Python 3.12 that happens later in the fall. Mm -hmm. What does the rest of the year look like for you in terms of bringing this from you know, approved PEP to now it's in the code once, you know, people go to install Python 3.12. Well, uh, several different things going on here. One, uh, we're going to get this feature in. I'm pretty confident about that. So we have most of the, the key work already done, few odds and ends to wrap up. But um, I'm guarantee there are plenty of things that we've missed, bugs that we'll have to fix get this ironed out over the next few months, I expect we'll have to, to sort out a number of details that just got missed. And that, that's fine. We'll get that sorted out, get everything all, all stable in all the corner cases, right? On the other hand, um, there are a lot of people interested in how to take advantage of this. And so, especially once it's out in the beta one release, people are gonna start experimenting with this. 
They're going to try and come up with ways how they can take advantage of it for their workloads. And so I expect that we're going to be seeing uh, both a lot of feedback as well as a lot of questions about how things are working. And so that's kind of a, another thing that I expect I'll, I'll be spending a lot of time on over the next few months, if not over the next year. Yeah. And then the third thing is that, uh, unfortunately, 3.12, we didn't really have the opportunity to land uh, kind of a support in Python itself in, in the language to take advantage of multiple interpreters. Yeah. So I have a, a, another PEP to add a standard library module that would give you access to creating new interpreters and using them. Mm. We, we, didn't, uh, we weren't able to get that in for 3.12, so that won't be around. And what I'm going to do in the meantime is um, publish something to PyPI so that people can experiment in their Python code, right? Also gives people kind of a look at what they would have to do to implement their own stuff in, using the CAPI. Right. So those three things are kind of what I expect are, are going to take up a lot of my time. I think that's going to be awesome, and I'm, I'm looking forward to trying that out and learning a little bit more about it. Um, speaking of, of looking forward to things, we're here on day three of talks. I feel like I think it's probably like day five for you now. Um, what's, what's left for you at PyCon 2023? So we'll wrap up the day. You know, I'll, I'll, like all the other days, I'll probably spend a lot of time talking to people. Uh, I'm staying through the sprints, so okay. I'll be sprinting on all this stuff. I've already had people approach me about um, they want to learn more about things, and, and PyCon's the perfect opportunity to sit down and very efficiently get people up to speed, because I want people out there trying this out, really taking advantage of it. So there's that. I've had people approach me saying, hey, how can I help with documentation on this? Um, you mentioned it would be great to have a tutorial about how to use subinterpreters. Yeah. You know, I'd like to help with that. I'm like. Great, let's sit down during the sprints and hash it out. You know, I, and of course I have a, a number of patches I got to get landed for 3.12, so I've got uh, about two weeks left. So I'll be working on that too. Awesome, well, uh, we're here folks at PyCon 2023 in Salt Lake City. Uh, next year we're gonna be in Pittsburgh for 2024. Eric, I'm guessing you'll be there. <laughs> I expect I will. All right, awesome. Well, for my guest, Eric Snow, I've been Jay Miller, and thank you for uh, taking time with me, Eric, for this interview. Glad and uh, until next time, we'll talk to you later.